What does it mean to embody omnipresence, omniscience, and omnipotence? Within the depths of your soul resides a force potent enough to unlock infinite wonders. To understand this capacity fully, we turn to the narrative found in the book of Joshua. It proclaims that the lands your feet traversed shall be yours, a covenant made specifically with Joshua. In this divine play, God serves as the supreme conductor, with us as his instruments. Yet, his wish is for us to unite, under his timeless moniker, I am. As you journey through life, you carry the quintessence of your existence. It's an undeniable truth. You may forget who you are, lose your way, or even your sense of self, but your existential core remains unshakable. Thus, without uttering a single word, you manifest the I am. This is a testament to God, to the consciousness of being, present even in the remotest corners where divine presence feels absent. Nothing exists outside of God's realm, including you. All is interconnected, and embracing this unity opens up endless possibilities. Every element of the cosmos infiltrates your consciousness, making you the mind of the universe. My dwelling is miles away, New York lies thousands of miles distant, and a recently discovered place lies even further, several thousand miles away. I am aware of these locations, yet by accepting that everything is intertwined and a reflection of my mind, of our collective psyche, distances become irrelevant. These places are not far away, but present here. Should I long to visit my abode in Barbados but find myself without the means or time, I can transport there in my mind, riding the fiery chariot of my imagination. This practice has become a familiar exercise, now wielded with discretion, reserved for moments of absolute necessity. I've learned that visions held with conviction soon manifest into reality. This power is also at your disposal, ready to fulfill your desires. Let me show you the way. Delve into your mind and visualize yourself in the place or state you desire. Though it may seem external, remember, you are all imagination, and thus, can exist wherever your imagination takes you. God dwells within us, and we in Him. The core of humanity is its imagination, which is none other than God Himself. God's omnipresence mirrors that of imagination. God's omnipotence and omniscience are attributes of imagination as well. In essence, God is imagination. Therefore, if I, embodying imagination, immerse myself in a desired scenario, no force on earth can prevent it from coming to fruition in this three-dimensional world. Emotion fuels this transformative power. Our emotions sculpt reality, as illustrated in Genesis chapter 27. In this story, Isaac, father to Esau and Jacob, occupies a central role. Esau symbolizes the tangible world, while Jacob embodies the subjective world, filled with dreams and desires. When Jacob masquerades as the tangible, Isaac asks, Draw near so I can determine if you are truly my Esau. And when asked, Are you Jacob? He affirms, I am. Likewise, you must immerse yourself in the subjective reality you've envisioned, giving it life through sound, taste, smell, touch, and sight. Believe this vision to be your current reality. You become Isaac, embodying the scriptures. As the narrative progresses, when Isaac's attention shifts solely to the tangible, Esau returns and Jacob fades, leaving the blessing with the subjective reality. The world may deny what you've envisioned for yourself. However, the world you've imagined, with its newly envisioned state, begins to replace the objective reality, becoming your Esau, as you will see in life. You take on the role of Isaac, with his two sons, Esau, your current reality, and Jacob, your subjective realm of imagination. Though your imagined world might seem unreal, by wrapping yourself in your vision and engaging your senses, your desire is set for manifestation. This is my method. When I close my eyes, the external world dims, and like Isaac, I become deaf to outside noise. I then position myself in the desired scenario. With my inner vision, I explore a new world, indulging in its aroma, texture, and sounds, finding comfort. In this comfort, I hear the declaration, it is done. Upon opening my eyes, Esau tries to convince me the world I experienced is an illusion. But, having visited this realm repeatedly, I am convinced of its reality, and I relive the relief felt when declaring, it is done. Truly, it is accomplished. 
nothing else is required but to let that seed grow in peace. The power I referenced at the beginning, lying within you and capable of marvels, resides in your extraordinary human imagination, for it is God himself. The promise to Joshua is God's promise to himself, for no one but God can fulfill that promise. Crafting a narrative meant solely for him, God, as both director and lead actor, embraces the role of protagonist. Before any titles, his name is I Am. I Am. In every story, I play roles ranging from the wealthy to the poor, the celebrated to the unnoticed. Even as my current reality refutes my imagined world, when I accept the reality of that imagined realm, I bless this world, and such a blessing cannot be revoked. The moment the imagined becomes real to me, I witness the blessing's manifestation. An immutable blessing. My external world, represented in the Bible by Esau and cloaked in insecurity, seeks my blessing to continue in my current reality, transforming as I wrap myself in a new guise of prosperity. While I can't lead you to the peak to view the land from that vantage point, you can reach it on your own. You can traverse any location in the universe by simply believing you are already there. During my military service, my superior denied my leave request. In the physical realm, his decision was final, but not in God's domain. On the day I received the denial, I envisioned myself honorably discharged. I found myself in my New York apartment, thousands of miles from the barracks. I pretended to sleep in my bed, convincing myself I was back, not just for a moment, but honorably discharged permanently. In my mind, my spouse and daughter occupied their beds. Rising, I approached the window, gazing upon a scene unique to my view. I observed the buildings along the street and wandered through the apartment, touching familiar objects, before returning to sleep in New York City, solidifying it as my undeniable reality. The next morning, I envisioned a document resembling my discharge request. A hand with a pen crossed out request denied and firmly wrote request approved below. An affirmation resonated within me, the transaction is complete, Sacchetti requires no further action, heralding that my dreams had materialized, impervious to any external obstruction. A mere nine days afterward, the same authority who had initially dismissed my plea reversed his decision in favor. Imagine the profound impact of visualizing yourself in a desired scenario, only to be greeted with the confirmation, the transaction is complete, Sacchetti requires no further action. The very next day, evidence of this realization surfaces, reinforcing the notion that all is attainable for those attuned to their intrinsic essence. You embody the archetypes of both Joshua from the Hebrew Scriptures and Jesus from the Christian New Testament. Jesus symbolizes the pinnacle of human imagination, synonymous with Jehovah, and Jehovah embodies the concept of I Am. He signifies pure consciousness, and perceiving Him as anything but intimate hinders your ability to harness this inherent capability. Eschew the worship of external deities and idols, and instead, turn inward to the authentic God, the one who existed before your name was given. Proclaim your identity, I am as God. What you append to I am defines your essence. Before your existence was acknowledged, there was I am. Before the name Neville, before your name, there was I am. Growing up within the Christian faith, you might have been conditioned to view Jesus as a remote figure. Yet, how can you foster a connection with something you don't perceive as an integral part of yourself? There has only ever been one Joshua, one Jehovah, a singular God orchestrating the grand spectacle we refer to as life, where every actor is a manifestation of God. Thus, contemplate this, if I am God, where do I stand? Where can I venture where God is not present? If I make my bed in the depths, God is there. If I ascend to the heavens, He is there as well. He is omnipresent, and so am I. Hence, physical relocation is redundant, it suffices to transition my thoughts from one state to another, from one circumstance to another. I remember a particularly frigid evening in New York, scheduled to address a congregation near Times Square, where typically over a thousand individuals would congregate, but due to severe cold and snowfall, only about 200 braved the weather that night. My debut book had just been published, with over 50 copies sold, and I was keen to distribute more, having printed 5,000 copies. Given the storm, I opted to speak about the warmth of Barbados, its palm trees, and the unique tropical aromas. As I left, 
I felt transported to my mother's home in Barbados, hearing the whisper of leaves in the breeze and inhaling the sweet tropical fragrances. Shortly after, I received a telegram alerting me to my mother's grave condition, urging my immediate return. Within 24 hours, I was en route to Barbados with my wife. I had visualized my return home, though not under such circumstances. Therefore, it's crucial to exercise this power with caution. When I prompt you to adopt a specific state or envision a particular scenario, it's imperative you perceive it as tangible, for our reality is shaped by our emotions. This miraculous capability lies dormant within you, awaiting your acknowledgement of your true identity. Supplications before an external deity will not unlock this power. Remember, irrespective of your location, whether in a church or a bar, God accompanies you, sanctifying the space by your mere presence. A bar can be as consecrated as a church if you recognize your true essence. Regardless of your environment or actions, creation springs solely from your emotions, and even if the objective world denies that reality, the state envisioned as real is already on its path to manifestation. Abstaining from interrupting the process with doubts or inquiries about its progression ensures its fruition. We are perpetually imagining, albeit often unconsciously. Individuals who perceive themselves as victims of society might provoke external turmoil, believing they are rectifying the injustices inflicted upon them, yet they are merely deluding themselves, for their presence in such predicaments stems from their own imaginative prowess. They might not have explicitly visualized imprisonment, but by persistently nurturing feelings of victimization, they inadvertently manifested that reality. Acknowledging that there is but one God, and God is all-encompassing, who then can you injure but yourself? Beyond God, there exists nothing, and all realities emanate from one's consciousness, not from any external or distant deity. Keep this wisdom at heart, and you shall never be led astray. As I reconstruct the temple I voluntarily dismantled in this earthly realm, the inert stones that form my body are revitalized, each stone reassembling into my being, making it more radiant, more innovative, for God is an infinitely creative force. This ability to enact wonders, I reiterate, resides within your magnificent human imagination. It is, in essence, God himself. As I've emphasized time and again, the human form is a manifestation of the imagination. To a Christian, this is Jesus, to a Jew, Jehovah. Traditionally, Jesus and Jehovah are revered as idols, but the true name of God is I Am. The human imagination, the soul and true God. By consciously wielding this extraordinary power, where could you possibly find yourself that isn't conceived by imagination? Nowhere, for wherever you are, you are there by virtue of your imagination. A newborn, oblivious to his identity or whereabouts, knows one thing with certainty, he exists. That is God, the awareness of existence without labels. This understanding, this is your power to achieve anything you desire. Do not concern yourself with how your desires will manifest, that is beyond your purview. Sow the seed and allow it to naturally germinate until it reaches fruition. Perhaps a stranger crosses your path, facilitating the realization of your vision, leading you to believe that without their intervention, nothing would have transpired. However, it's essential to recognize that this stranger merely played a role in guiding you to where you had already arrived in your imagination, for everything is interconnected. We are all interlinked, facilitating such encounters. People can assist you in achieving your goal. Concentrate solely on the goal as already accomplished, and the right individuals will appear on your path to aid in the realization of this process. Your will acts as the electric current, while your desire is the lamp awaiting illumination. Without desire, there is no light, just as the lamp remains unlit without electricity. Similarly, you must connect your desire to your I am for your desire to manifest and materialize, to become visible and tangible. Affirm the reality of your goal, envisioning it as already actualized, already present, enveloping you. Observe your world from this perspective, and upon reopening your eyes, disregard what you've seen with your mind's eye. Acknowledge that you've already permitted your goal to emerge, to solidify into a tangible aspect of your life. Closely examine Genesis chapter 27, identifying with each character depicted, for they symbolize the emotional states you navigate. Like Isaac, you are constantly confronted with two sons, 
the current world and the world you wish to enter, the present condition and the desired state. 